this video you learn how to use triads to create music on guitar. Triads are great for opening up the whole fretboard to you as far as chords are concerned. But once you have the triad chord shapes down, what do you do with them? Hi, this is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net and in this lesson you're going to learn several ways to use triads in the context of rhythm guitar playing. I'll show you three ways to use triads via three different chord progressions. If you're new to triads and you'd like to first focus on getting some shapes down, then click the link in the top right hand corner of this video. However, it's not necessary for you to view that lesson to benefit from what we're going to do today with triads. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first application for our triads in a rhythm guitar context here. So first off, triads can sound okay on their own, but you're not often really going to just hear them as an isolated guitar part. Um, they typically work better as an additional part, a secondary part to an existing chord progression, for example. That's where you hear triads most of the time. They sit sort of on top of, the, of a chord progression doing something. We'll have a look at a few examples here. Sure, they can, they can sound alright on their own for a short period of time, maybe an, uh, an introduction to a song before you know, the other guitar and instruments come in perhaps, or um, a little musical interlude of some sort. They can certainly work in and of themselves, but most times triads are played in addition to an existing chord progression. So that's what we're going to do here. Our chord progression is going to be C, G, A minor, and F. And so while that chord progression is playing one bar on each chord, I'm going to play um, combinations of triads. So all I've got to do is just match the chord. So if the chord is C, I've got to play a C triad, of course. If the chord then goes to G, I need to move to a G triad of sorts, whichever one I want to. As we know, there are options with triads. You've got multiple shapes that you can choose from. You then have an A minor chord in our progression, so find an A minor triad to play on top of that chord. And then the F is the fourth chord in the progression, so find an F chord to play. So I'm just following the chord progression, okay? And what I'm gonna do here, you're gonna hear this in a moment, okay? So you'll hear it all together. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, we could strum the triad, but let's say the chords are strumming in the background. They're doing something like this. Uh, maybe a full bar, didn't I say? So, um, full bar on the chord. So maybe something like this is the progression. Okay, that's going to be ticking along in the background. Now we can take the triad shapes and create a secondary part to sit on top of that chord progression to create interest and depth and scope for, for the tune. Okay, so I'm going to take that triad combination I used then, which was root position 3-2-1 triads on the third, second and first strings. Remember, you can click the link in the top right hand corner of the video to check out a lesson just on those triad shapes. However, that's not the point of this lesson, we're, we're applying them. So here I'm going to pick a pattern. I'm going to pick that pattern. And so when I go to G, and then the next chord was A minor and F. In fact, I'll go up to this A minor. And then the F. Okay? To stick with root position, I played um, uh, first inversion triads there. I could play that on top of the chord progression. And then I could continue to move, you know, as the chord progression repeats and cycles through, I can use different triad shapes. So maybe the second time I play that, um, or that chord progression plays, I might play on this triad, second inversions, first inversions. So I might do that the second time. So what I do can change in terms of the voicing while behind the same voice chords, the opens, uh, open chords are playing. And then as we did in the lesson on triads, the one I've referred to in the top right corner of this video, we could play also by position, meaning staying around the same area of the guitar at given point. So I might continue playing over that chord progression, but sort of stick around the same area of the guitar, right? Which produces a really nice voice leading. The notes are moving very smoothly from one chord to the next and some of the notes are actually common to several chords. Um, and then I could move further up but stay around this area. Okay, so what I'm doing here is applying the by shape approach which is using one shape root position to voice the chords out of the progression. Then I was playing by position which means I've got to use different shapes for each triad, each chord, 
um, so I can stay in the same area of the guitar. Okay, but this approach is using the triad shape to follow the chord change and then just moving through different triad shapes each time the chords come around. Okay, so have a listen to how that sounds all put together. Okay, so this second application is similar in that we are going to be playing triads over an existing chord progression, um, but this is going to be a blues in C. So the backing is going to be something like this. Okay, typical blues in C. Okay, and so on. You'll hear it all together in a moment, so we don't have to go through the whole 12 bar blues there. But that's basically going to be the, the, the groove. And um, we are going to take the same sorts of triads, the three, two, ones, but there's going to be two things that are happening here that weren't or wasn't happening in the first application. First off, um, we're going to do a, what we might call a little side slipping approach, if you like. And that is where you play the triad and then you go down, a, you can either go up or down a semitone, a fret, um, to then resolve back into the chord. So we get this sort of thing. that sort of thing and if you go into the F etc back to the to the C and so forth so it's a, it creates movement in the chord progression which is really nice um, I think in this example that you'll hear in a moment where it puts this together over the blues chords um, I do this so I do that little side slip and then Now what's interesting, what's happening here, is I'm doing the little side slip, I change to F, and every second bar, it's like a two bar pattern, but I'm changing chord there because the second bar there's an F chord in the blues. It's a two bar pattern, I'm on the C, on the two, it's like one, two, three, and four, one, two, and three, and four, and so I have a little arpeggiated approach towards the end of the second bar there on whatever the chord is at the time in the progression and I slide into the triad play the third string the first and then the second so it's like one two three and four one two and three and four and now there's two bars of C that follow so what happens is I play C the first bar of C then I change to a new triad shape it's got to be C though because there's another bar of C and I do the second bar of the pattern Okay, so that's one, two, three, and four, one, two, and three, and four, and so that's the other thing that's happening that wasn't happening in the first application, and that is while the chord is static, meaning while the chord just sits on C in the in the rhythm for two bars, we move from this triad to this triad. So you can change triad, you've got to stay on C because the chord hasn't changed, it's a static chord, but you can change between C triads to create variation and, and movement in the triad part, which is very cool. I do that all the time when I use triads. Now you need to be, you know, you need the chord to sit there for, you, know, you could do it over a single bar, depending on the tempo of the song, but if you've got a couple of bars to play with, if the chord's going to sit there for a bar or, or two, then you've got time to move from you know different C major triads, doing whatever it is that you're doing on those triads. So that's very cool. The triads can be moving while the backing is staying constant, okay? So you get that nice contrast there. Um, so that's the other thing that's happening in addition to this side slipping approach. Have a listen to how that sounds. You can, in a moment, you, in just a sec, you're going to hear that together, okay? You're going to hear the blues chords and you're going to hear and see me playing that um, approach using triads over a blues. And that's another really cool way that you can use triads in your guitar playing. So have a listen.
so with this third application with our triads in rhythm guitar context, again, a chord progression and triads on top, but we're going to be doing something different again with the triads. So first, the chord progression we're going to play on top of is an A minor. So uh, the key is A minor, A minor, F, C, and G. And we're going to be half a bar on each chord. So it's going to be something like one, two, three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, that type of thing. Okay. And so what we're going to do, what we can do with triads is we can add notes to the triads. We can um, extend on the triad and create little ornamentations that sound very cool. First off, let's just find some triad shapes to play this progression. So I could play my A minor here. I could play my F down here, both um, first inversion triads up to first inversion C and first inversion G. So you can hear the chord progression there. A minor, F, C. Okay, and what we'll do is a little trill on top, a little decoration, ornamentation here. So I'm playing, the, I'm picking up the triad, and then I've got a hammer on pull off on the top string, five, eight, back to five, and then back to the second string of the triad. And then I repeat the same pattern over the F triad. And this time I'm working up the triad and hammering on pulling off third to first and then playing the second string of the triad again again and then the same shape for the C so same thing and same for G okay so you got A minor you got F you got C and you got G okay That type of thing, okay? Very cool sound. You might kind of, it's kind of reminiscent of like John Frigiani in the Chili Peppers, that type of thing, right? That's what's going on there. So we get that nice decorative element that we can add to triads. Just because we're playing a triad doesn't mean we can't add notes to it. And so we're doing that. Almost not really adding notes. It's because the note's so brief, it's really just decorating the notes of the triad more than really adding a note, but you can certainly add notes as well. So have a listen to the application of that over the chord progression in A minor. Yeah. Okay, and just before we uh, finish up here with this third application, um, here's another variation of the same idea here. So this time I'm going to do it more, more or less by position. There I was moving by shape, right? I was keeping the one shape for each of the chords. It was the first inversion triad. Here I'm going to stick it around the same area. So I'm going to play my A minor as a second inversion up here. Then my F root position is right there. Only one note difference between those two triads, A minor and F. And then I'm going to play the C, which is right there as well. So look how neatly they fall and how they sound as a result. And then I'm going to go up to this one for my G. Okay, so they're going to be the chords, um, the triads that I'll use. And same little idea, the ornamentation on top, right? The decorative element where we go. So it's my pinky that hammers onto 10 of the first string and pulls back down to the eighth fret, which is under the first finger. And then I play the second string. So the same sort of pattern, different triad shape. And then I can sit there and go to F. Now I need to fret the F a little bit differently to keep the pinky free. So I'm going to use my second and third fingers there on the second and third strings and my first finger as it is always on the first string. And then I got the pinky free to do the little hammer on pull off. And then it was C. So notice up until that point, because we're staying in the same position, the ornamentation is the same, but the chord changes. It's always this, which is very, or just about, I think. Almost. It, it, the note on the second string might change, but the ornamentation on top doesn't. So you got A minor, F, C. The only time it changes is when you go up to G, okay, where you need to just, again, use your second and third fingers so the pinky's free to get the hammer on pull off, right? So that works really well too. It's just around the same area of the guitar. So you can start to see how the one idea you can multiply the different ways that you can apply it because there's so many triad shapes and we're only dealing with the three, two, one string set here. There's other many more triads on the guitar. Okay, so have a listen now to how that one sounds over the top of our chord progression.
If you like this lesson, then you'll love this free ebook audio I've created for you about using fragments of chords to solo with on your acoustic guitar. Of course, chords are thought of in the context of rhythm guitar playing. However, have you ever considered them for soloing? In this ebook, you learn five unique ways to use chord fragments to solo with on your guitar. Chord fragments allow you to create a great dynamic with the contrast of single notes to chords in the lines you play. All examples in the ebook have been broken down into the finest of detail so you can not only play them, but understand what is going on. So you can use chord fragments in your own guitar solos. So click the link below the description of this video and download your free ebook audio, how to improve your acoustic guitar solos by using these five cool and easy tricks. Let me know in the comments section what acoustic guitar topics you would like to see covered in future videos. I read every comment and I always love to hear your suggestions. If you like this video, then hit that like button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell button so YouTube tells you when I've released a new video. This is Simon Candy from AcousticGuitarLessonsOnline.net. As always, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.